Okay. We're good. All right, we look good. All right, so uh, Stephen Fogg with Thunderbird Long Range here, and we've got uh, Randy Galvin of LRS Precision. And today is Randy's uh, topic. Uh, as you uh, guys uh, probably know, Andy, uh, Andy, Randy does custom ammo. So he will do uh, custom ammo to your specs, and as well, he does load development for your rifles. Um, and he does good stuff. I can tell you that I shot uh, my Savage uh, 6.5 Creedmoor when I first started getting into it. And uh, it shot half-minute groups with any match ammo. Uh, I shot the, uh, the SIG ammo. And it had the, uh, I think it was the, it was the, uh, they, it shot the Sierra Match Kings and the Federal shooting the Burger and the Hornady shooting the uh, ELDMs, uh, the 140s. And uh, those all shot great, shot great groups. Uh, but Randy's ammo, which he just kind of threw out there, I'm like, send me uh, 200 uh, cases, uh, 200 rounds. And he threw them together, and it shot uh, as accurate as everything else, like half MOA. Uh, but his ammo had a much lower uh, extreme spread and standard deviation. I can't remember what it was, but his was without knowing anything about my rifle other than 6.5 Creedmoor, I think it was right around, it was right at 10 or 11, uh, maybe 12 if I recall. But all the other ammo, the, the other match ammo was, uh, it was still below 20, but it was uh, 4 to 5 or even 6 uh, feet per second difference on the uh, on the ES. So, uh, he does good stuff, um, and uh, send him your rifle. He, he'll even uh, custom load it and develop uh, uh, loads. And I know I've seen uh, plenty of, plenty of uh, snapshots of his lab radar or uh, magneto speed with SDs at, uh, at 4 and 5 and 6, so, or uh, ES uh, at uh, 4 and 5 and 6 and uh, SD well below 20, so... At any rate, uh, Randy knows his stuff, so I'm going to let him kick this off. But uh, what do you need for basics in reloading and what to do? Um, yeah, so uh, this video is really just going to talk on someone who's getting started in reloading and what they need to get. Uh, I would say the biggest thing that people, the most important thing when it comes to reloading is going to be the dies that you get. The die, the, your dies and how you measure your powder. Both yeah. Yeah, both of those are going to be the most important things. Uh, the press, there's a lot of really good presses out there, and we're talking single-stage presses right now for getting started, especially with long-range stuff. Uh, I mean, me and Steven both use Forster Coax, but I've used RCBS. Yeah, Forster hanging right up there. Used, used Lee. I've, I've used pretty much all of the single-stage presses, and they're all about about the same. I mean, the Forester is a little bit nicer with some of its features, but everything else is pretty well in there. Yeah, I think if you get anything above like the like the the cheapest of the cheap uh, presses, you can get a basic uh, RCBS press or a basic Lyman press. Those are going to be solid presses. In fact, I started reloading off of uh, a Lyman Spartan, and you're like, <laughs> you saw it, and you're like, what is that thing? It was so old. I picked yeah. it up at a uh, at an estate sale at uh, out of the local range. I, I I picked up everything, and so I I didn't hesitate to uh, to buy that uh, buy that press, and it loaded great ammo for me. It was easy, and uh, I kept it as a backup, but uh, sent it off to uh, to a friend. So I started on a Lyman. It was a Lyman Spartan. I think you can find them on eBay for fifty to seventy bucks. You yeah. Know? And that and that's another thing when it comes to getting a press, if, especially if you're just getting started, look for a used one. It it really they don't really break. They don't. Uh, the yeah, I mean the the presses are good. Most of them uh, will still get warranty work if something actually breaks on the press. But you can find used ones, garage sales, eBay, under a hundred bucks for a good quality single stage press. Yeah, yeah, solid press. I would. I that's. <clears throat> That's typically what I would do, but eventually, when I wanted to, I, I bought the uh, the coax on a on a pretty good sale. 
Yeah, and I mean, that's what I run, but that's because I switch between calibers so much, and it just makes switching easier. That's the biggest advantage for me on the coax. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. So I was going to grab my coax, but I don't think we'll do that. No, nah, but yeah, so, but you can easily get a press for 100 bucks, 150 bucks. You've got the kits from RCBS and Lee and all of them uh, that are decent starting kits with everything. I know the RCBS Rock Chucker kit, I think, is what, about 395 if you buy it not on sale. Yeah, I haven't ever looked. But, but that's a good kit to get started with, for sure. Has just about, not quite everything, but just about everything you need besides the dies. Yeah, the dies. Yeah, that's the one thing I, I about press is if you're going to reload a bunch of different calibers, uh, you can look at the features uh, feature set, but the way the uh, Forrester... Uh, has the collars and they just slide in and out. You don't have to screw them down. It has just a channel that slides in and out. That is, that's a huge feature. Oh, um, check out our video on the uh, on the Frankfurt Arsenal M Press. Yeah, that's a. I haven't gotten a chance to play with it, but I from seeing it at Shot Show, I really was impressed with it for the price. Because what was it two two something? Yeah, it was two something. It was. It was like a hundred bucks less than uh, than the coax. About a yeah. hundred bucks is what I was thinking. Yeah, it was a lot less than I was expecting it to be. Yeah, uh, and frankly, I looked at it, you know, and went through the features, and it's solid. I mean, these presses are made out of huge chunks of steel, and I think they did it. I think they did a really good job. It, it's it'd be hard to screw it up. I mean, if they did screw it up, it'd be it'd be a huge fail. But I I don't think so. Yeah, no, it looks look pretty good. I don't think it's on the market yet, though. Is it? I think it's coming out this spring, summer, so maybe, but I, I'm not sure if they started shipping yet. Yeah, okay. No, maybe, but that's that's something. So if you're looking at at, uh, at some of the fe same feature sets as a, as the Forester, the uh, Empress certainly looked uh, for... Is that, what, is that what it's called, the Empress? I think so. Yeah, I can't just remember. Just the Forester press. I think it's the only press they make, so... Yeah, the new Forester, the new Forester press. So at any rate, those... Those are presses. We or don't Frankfurt want Arsenal, not Forrester. Oh, yeah, Frankfurt Arsenal. <clears throat> Frankfurt Arsenal. Forrester makes the coax. Forrester makes the coax, yeah. All these F words. Yeah. Um, on a Sunday, no less. So, uh, okay, so that's that's the press. Yeah, so, um, so you've got the press, and then yeah. next thing you're going to have to do is get yeah. dies. Uh, and you, and it really depends on what you're going with. I, I personally, for most of the majority of my stuff, I use Reading Competition dies or... Forrester yeah. dies. So, I think you've got a few different dies yeah. up there that you can. Yeah. So for. So here's a. Like you said, it depends on what you're gonna do. It they're not terrible dies, but these are this is the RCBS die, right? So that's yeah. the uh, full length sizer. They th these RCBS are quality dies. They are. I've I've got I've got a lot of them for hunting calibers and stuff. I don't load a lot of. Yeah, and this is the seating die, and so you see it just has the, uh, you know, where the where the case goes up in there. But those are those are great dies. So if you're on a budget, you're going to be able to load accurate ammo with that. Yep. Uh, the uh, so that was just the two two three die. So if I reload for my um, uh, like my AR or something. That's what I'll. That's what I'll use. But uh, and so this is the. Uh, but this is a basic RCBS set, and so it's a lot the same. But you'll see the the feature sets are a little bit nicer, in my opinion, on that. Is that Reading or RCBS? Or Reading, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You knew just by looking at it. Yeah. So those so are the. the uh, you've got a little bit more adjustment up there on the top of the Reading dies, mm -hmm. and that's just your standard Reading, not the competition. Yep, that's just the the uh, the standard reading die. Yeah, is that? Yeah, it's not gonna show. Much. There we go. There we go. Got too much light. So let me go put switch one of these lights off. Oh, this is a reloading room, not a uh, studio. <laughs> so 
But yeah, so that's uh, those are just the standard dies, and then uh, but for my uh, 6XC, the uh, full length sizer looks pretty much the same, but this is the uh, the bench rest type, and yeah, so it a has a sleeve. Yeah, that's your Forrester, right? Yep. Yeah, so that's a Forrester uh, bench dress. So it has a sleeve. So the the uh, case, uh, right? So the case goes up into the sleeve and centers it, and then it seats the bullet. Whereas the other ones, it comes down over it. It's seating the bullet before the uh, the case is. The case can still be moving a little bit, technically as the case as it's seating because it doesn't uh because the die is hollowed out to this and so at the end of the press is when this fits into the body of the die so this one because it has the sleeve it centers it right and then and then it presses the bullet in okay so that's that's it with uh, the dies yeah, and then uh, like your ready, if you have the Reading competition seating dies, those have like a micrometer on the top of them to adjust the seating depth, so you can get uh, per thousands, and it actually will tell you how much you're adjusting it by. Yeah, so the uh, you can get Forster with those as well. Yeah, right? yeah, I believe you can, I, and I I like those just because it makes it real easy to adjust something, and if you need to adjust it, you know. Uh, how much you're adjusting it by instead of just being like that should be close. Yeah, I I just do the that should be close thing, honestly. Yeah, um, and, and that's and, and that's really all you need. You you're not yeah you're gaining ease of use and a little bit more precision with the competition versus the standard Reading dies or Forester or whichever dies you go with, and it's uh well there is a good bit of a price difference in them because I know. Yeah. Our CBS die sets are about what about fifty bucks? Yeah, fifty bucks, give or take. Yeah, and then a set of like Reading competition dies are going up to about one hundred and twenty-five. You've got cheaper dies like the Lee, and they'll load stuff almost as well as the RCBS dies do. And you're gonna those are only about thirty bucks, I think, for a set, and then they'll and they'll come with the case holder as well. Yeah, no, they they work, and in fact, I loaded for my, I I was at uh, Cabela's in their bargain cave, and they had an open set of Lee three hundred Win Mag dies, and I was trying to convince my buddy to load, but he wasn't going to spend any money, so I bought it. It was like twenty or twenty five bucks or something. Yeah, and and they and that loaded, and and we shot half MOA and better groups with it. So. It, yeah, I've I've done Grendel ammo on Lee dies and had single digit SDs. Yeah, the, you're not... the benefit is at the mar. You can load really accurate ammo with pretty much everything out there, but it's at the margins. If you want the ease of use and exactly. improve, and and how long they'll last. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so like right, so right now we've got we need the press, and you can pick them up anywhere from. Hundred bucks for a used one, up to four or five hundred bucks for a Forester for uh, that. And then you've got dies ranging anywhere from thirty to one hundred and fifty bucks. Some of them get a little crazy, but that's not yeah. higher. But I that would be for someone starting reloading. I was going through these. These are from these are from a long time ago, but uh, uh, yeah, two fifty seven Roberts. I think I. Bought this off of eBay for like twenty seven bucks or something, so yeah, you and, could and buy used and, RCBS dies for under thirty bucks. Oh yeah, absolutely. So uh, and yeah, I wouldn't be afraid to use to uh, buy used. Just no. you know, make sure that they don't have rust on them. That's really the thing. Yeah, and even if you buy used ones and they're messed up, you can send them back. They've got lifetime warranties on. I think every die company does. I don't know of any that don't. Yeah. Uh, next next thing uh, after you've got your dies. The, we already kind of talked about Lee comes with the the shell holder, the RCBS Redding and uh, Forrester. You're gonna have to buy a shell holder for it. There, it's a universal pattern on shell holders. They're like five bucks. It really doesn't matter what brand you go with. I haven't noticed one being better than the other. 
unless you get the Forester Press, then you don't need shell holders. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, that Frankfurt Arsenal, for all intents and purposes, operates... Right, yeah, the Frankfurt Arsenal, What you wouldn't need shell holders either. Yeah. Um, the shell holders, you'd need, you'll need a, cal- a set of calipers, either digital or analog. It doesn't, doesn't really matter, but that's an absolute essential that you have to have to reload. Uh, they range, in, and you need one that'll go down to, like, like 10,000. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, think you're, I think you want to be able to see that. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't get one that doesn't go down to at least 10,000. 10, 10, and those range anywhere from... For I've seen digital ones for like 25 bucks on Amazon. Uh, you can get like the Lyman ones for, I think, 30 bucks or so. And then they, they get more expensive the more higher quality ones you get. If you go like a Snap-on or something crazy, those, I don't even want to know what that would cost, actually. Yeah. <laughs> $200 yeah. calipers. Yeah. Uh, uh, the only what issue... is it, uh, Midi Toyo or whatever? I don't know how to say it, but I think that's the way I say it in my brain. Those seem to be like one of the go-to. Yeah, there's and the digital ones are getting pretty popular. They're a little more accurate too, uh, as long as they. I'm an idiot, so I use the digital ones because it just tells me what it is. I yeah. you could get it... the dial ones. Yeah, I've got both. The only only issue I ever have with the digital ones, the batteries go dead. They just keep keep batteries around. It's not they use like a little tiny watch battery looking thing, and I'm sure different ones use different batteries, so it's not. Yeah, one of the little button ones. But I, when I first started, I got a Cabela's, and I think I picked it up on sale for like twelve or fifteen dollars a digital one. Yeah, and and you can get them. They're they're not super expensive. Yeah, it um, it was. I wanted it always to always test it like two or three times. Because it didn't always read as fast as my newer one, um, but uh, but it still worked and it was still it was still accurate enough. It just had its limitations. Yeah. Uh, so caliper is then you're going to need um, some way to measure your powder. Either they've got the little beam scales. You'll see you'll see people online recommending beam scales over anything, and. Those people are living in the 1970s. Beam scale is not necessarily the best thing to have. It's slow. They work. They they absolutely work. But personally, I wouldn't want to just rely on a beam scale. You can, like, they're good to use to verify that your digital scales are working. But if you get a quality, even a quality digital scale, you're going to be pretty good with most of them. I know you've you you've used a lot more of the cheaper scales than I have. Yeah. So this is this is my experience. I started reloading. Again, I went in I just this was before I was really doing uh uh long range and precision and really figured out, you know, what what good gear was. But I I bought the Frankfurt Arsenal one. The this cheap battery powered one that was like fifteen or twenty bucks again, something off off of Amazon. It wasn't it wasn't that expensive. What it wasn't as accurate so I could test the same load and it would it would read a little bit different. Part of that is something just you, that goes along with all scales is you want to make sure and have it centered and things like that. But I could shake it down and, and work with it and, and then get a consistent reading by putting the the uh, putting the pan in the same place and, and doing that. So it absolutely worked. I could trickle it in. It was a little bit slower to trickle, but it would work. I could get it. Uh, to work, but it was, uh, you know, it was accurate enough. I picked up a Gem Pro 250, and it was it's much more accurate, and it worked better. It was pretty fast. Um, and I see a I see a lot of people using those. Yeah, so it was it was a good option. I think they were 150. I just looked on Amazon. Um, I hadn't used it for a while because I'd gotten a, a charge master. And so I sent it over to my friend who started reloading and it doesn't work, but, a, but uh gem pro has a lifetime warranty. So I'm going to send it in and hopefully get a new one. Uh, but, but it worked, it worked great. And so, um, 
So that's that's an option if you want to buy a, a nice scale and have a, a separate scale or you, or you happen to have one laying around for some reason, the uh, the Gem Pro. Um, my buddy that had the Gem Pro, he ended up buying a, uh, a more expensive Frankfurt Arsenal one. And uh, it seems to be doing really well for him. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it, you've got that. There's also the um, auto, like the scale, like the auto powder tricklers that they've got, like the uh, Charge Masters, Frankfurt Arsenal, I think, makes one. Lyman yeah. makes one. So um, I've had the Lyman, and I think you had a couple Lyman. And my yeah, Lyman, I, I bought it used, and then it yeah. just took it, it just died. Yeah, that's. That, that was my experience with two different Lymans. They lasted about six months and then just stopped working. While they worked, I preferred them over the Charge Master, honestly. Yeah. I they, no, I thought I, they were I, a little more accurate. I thought they were easier to use and faster. But when they stop working after six months, it's a problem. Yeah. And that, so I just, I probably, I might have been able to warranty or something, but I had bought it used pretty inexpensively. So I just, I just threw it in the trash. But, uh, that's the uh, the IntelliDropper, and I've got some uh, some video. I think I posted it up. I'll find it again, but uh, it was a little bit slower than the Charge Master, only because it sensing the pan was there and sensing it was zero to start the charge took longer than the Charge Master. It actually it actually dispenses the powder faster than the Charge okay. Master. And I had tweaked my Charge Master to 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 dump powder faster. I I tweaked it specifically for uh, for the powder that I was running. Um, uh, so, but it was great. The other thing about the uh, that's neat about the Frankfurt Arsenal is you can put whatever powder you want in it, and then you hit calibrate for powder, and then it'll run through cycles and it'll figure out how fast that particular powder is dumping. And then, and then it tweaks its cycle to that particular powder. That's kind of a neat feature. Yeah. So if you're running like uh, H4350, you set it, and it'll it'll run through a cycle, and then it'll and then it uh, figures out how fast it dumps and that. And then it, uh, if you change powders, like you empty it out, clean it, and put H1000 in it, something with bigger kernels, hit it again, it'll run through the same thing, and so then it tweaks. Um, it's step motors in there to, to know how, how to turn to throw that particular powder. So okay, I think that's... overall, I think that has an advantage over the, uh, over the, uh, over the charge master. Cause you've got to tweak the charge master. You can do the straw method and all sorts of things, but, uh, yeah. uh, and I took, I took both of them and I ran them side by side, did 300 rounds and I was using both of them. Uh, which was nice to be able to go faster. Uh, the Charger Master loaded a few more over the 300, you know, like it was probably 260 or 265 or something. I didn't keep track. Yeah. But it was only a few more than the uh, than the uh, Frankfurt Arsenal. And, what's, what's the price on the Frankfurt? Uh, it's like 200 bucks. Okay, so it's a good bit cheaper than the yeah. Charger yeah. Master. Okay. I, I saw it and I had like sixty dollars in Cabela's bucks, and so I picked it up off of Cabela's. I thought hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that and and try and see because I'm saving up for uh, for a pricey one. But uh, I was in the meantime um, going to throw. We didn't talk about that, but the uh, the powder throwers where you dump yeah, it in the hopper yeah, and you. And yep. you pull the lever. Yeah, that was about to bring that up. Uh, yep. That's that's the other thing you've got. So you've got your auto charge throwers, and then you've got a uh, manual powder thrower. And you'll basically you basically tune yep. that with either a uh, beam scale or Gem Pro or whatever kind of scale you've got. And once you get it set, you can just really just pull a lever, and it'll give you the yep. powder charge. So this is one of the old Lymans that I bought when I bought that whole kit, right? I mean, this yep. is super old. And so you lift that lever up and uh, and throw the powder. Yeah, and then uh, a lot of people will throw like one grain under and then use a hand trickler to finish yep. filling the powder. And yep. that's how you adjust it there for that yep. one. Yep, so it's got these two adjustments, and then it has, I don't know if you can see it, 
but uh, inside. Yeah, but yeah, all the um, major manufacturers have but, a similar uh, system. Yeah, but this this uh, moves the uh, the bar in and out and uh, to uh, to dump. But uh, this one, I found that I could underthrow it and come, and I would not go over. I was underthrowing like half a grain under. And then and, just trickling over it. Uh, and then trickling up to it, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, but, what a lot, uh, that's what a lot of people do, and that'll save you a good bit of time. Yeah, so this 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 is, this is was really good. So that's what I was going to do. It's not so hard to trickle it in, honestly, just to dump and trickle. Yeah. It's not that much different than waiting on the Charge Master. So I was going to run this with the Gem Pro uh, until I saved up enough for the uh, A&D A &D trickler. Yeah. Uh, or and, A&D scale. Right. But and the A&D anyway, scale so, actually uses a similar system to that. I think they use the uh, Leap as the actual powder hopper. Yeah, so but uh, so talk about those expensive ones. But, uh, you know, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's, and that's more than my entire reloading setup, honestly. Right, yeah, because once, once you get more into it or if you want to just go... All, all in on reloading you've got your a and d scales with the area 419 upgrades you're looking at 14 1500 bucks for that or if you want to get really crazy you could get a prometheus for like five grand those look pretty awesome but i'm never spending five grand on a prometheus i i wouldn't they've, they've done tests on them and there's not enough of an advantage over the a and d to be worth it i'd rather have five a and d's yeah i'd rather have or a new Five gun. Five rifles, or four rifles, or three rifles, and an A and B. Well, I mean, that'd be almost a rifle for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Depends but, on what what ones. Yeah, I was thinking. I was I wasn't thinking full rifle, but yeah. At any rate, uh, so powder thrower, powder tricklers. Yep. Um. But yeah, so there's that. I don't really care for like the Lee design of their powder thrower. It, it leaks, and it's hard to adjust it and it uses cc's which is weird uh, I, I haven't messed with hornaday the rcbs one's pretty good on it um i found the rcbs for the but more budget-minded stuff is probably the best one to go with over hornaday or lee yeah i think for the most part like if you go with if you just want to buy a budget and you don't want to do a lot of research then just buy the budget RCBS model of whatever you're looking at. They're, yeah. they're solid. That, yeah. That's that's my experience. Like if you bought the lowest end of Lee or Hornady or whatever, um, you know some yeah. of their stuff. It's it's hit or miss. Like I know people hate hate the uh, Hornady thrower, powder yeah. thrower. Yeah, and, and that's and that's pretty much. And I think it stands true to pretty much everything. Is Lee and Hornaday are the lowest end stuff. Then you've got your RCBS. Then you move up to your Redding and Forster in quality when you're comparing a similar product because they all make similar products. Lyman's in there probably with RCBS, I would say. And it's kind of, Lyman's kind of hit or miss on what's good and what's not. Yeah, what product buy. But I think if, yeah, anything RCBS, I would, I would get, honestly. Yeah, RCBS is definitely middle of the road can't go wrong with i've got i've got an rcbs press out in the shop that's i picked up at a garage sale uh, i think it was made in the 60s yeah. so it's and it, it I, I use it um yeah well, i use it to hydroform brass and it works yeah so that so that stuff works so where are we at uh so we've got the uh the powder thrower we've got uh the press we've got the dies yep. now uh, uh primer handling so you're going to need a primer flip tray and something to put the primers into your brass and the way you're going to do that a couple different options uh, they've got on the on the pr most presses have a way to prime on the press i haven't seen a single single stage press that's not a complete pain to do that oh you gotta use like you got to touch the primer and put it in there. And yeah, you so pretty much have to pick up. It, it takes forever. Yeah. Uh, but they've got hand primers that are relatively inexpensive. I think they're 30 40 bucks for some of them. 
Uh, you've got bench mounted primers. That I use an RCBS bench mounted primer system. I had a Lee bench mounted priming system that worked pretty well until it broke. Like the cast metal snapped in half on the shell plate. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So I went with the RCBS. Uh, and the RCBS is a lot easier to use. It uses the same shell holders that you would use for your press. The Lee had a specific shell holders just for the primer that you couldn't interchange on the press. So it was kind of a, you had to make sure you, yeah, you had to make sure you had that and had to buy something separate. So if you got a different caliber, it was kind of a pain. Whereas RCBS does that. The RCBS uses a pickup tube and you just pick up the primers with the tube, put it in the bench mount and it works. They're hand mounted one. All the hand, all the hand ones that aren't mounted, pretty much just have like a tr primer tray that feeds into them. Yeah, that's what I ran, uh, you know, up until just recently, because uh, I wanted to go with a uh, bench mounted one. So I picked up a uh, a Forester. The Forester doesn't use shell holders at all. It right. has it has a little uh, little teeth adjustment, so you just get an Allen wrench and adjust the the jaws to to grab the uh, to grab the case so yeah and, that, uh, and that's an, that one's a nice that same with other forester stuff it's nice that it doesn't matter what caliber you switch to it'll work with it for yeah. shelving um i haven't really used a lot of hand of the hand priming ones so i don't know which ones are work better i know uh the lee hand primer uses the same specialized stuff for holding the shell that the bench mounted one did i think uh i'd have to look again but i think the uh i don't think the bench mounted ones are much more no they're they're not that expensive expensive I think. compared to the to the hand priming it not i went with a hand primer again didn't know better but that's what oh yeah no i used our it was an rcbs has the flip tray in it and everything. Yeah, and, uh, and I and I don't think I don't think you can go wrong if you get a good like an RCBS or Reading or one of the better ones than Lee with the it's hand. A pain primer. in the neck to sit there and do that, man. That just yeah, but it was two hundred in and I can see that where the bench mount you've just got a lever. Uh, I've I've done a couple thousand in a day on a bench mounted one and it's not hard. Yeah, I you maybe, don't uh, you don't get tired with the RCBS one. Yeah. You know, and I tend to load, uh, you know, I'm either loading, you know, 40 or 50 if I'm doing like a load development or whatever. But if I'm loading for a match or something, then I want to load them all. Yep. And I'm loading two or three hundred. And yep. so the, the hand primer just got it was just too much effort for me. OK, yeah, I, I, can I just see got that. tired of it. I could do it, but I'm a wimp. So I yeah. got the bench. I, pr I prefer the bench mounted stuff. Uh, hand primer, you do have the advantage of you can go sit and watch TV while you're priming brass. Yeah. Or have a TV in your reloading room. Yeah. Um, so priming your bullet seating is obviously done with your reloading dies. I think that's pretty much all you have to. Well, no, trimming. You need some way to, yeah. you're going to eventually need some way to trim your brass. Um, I know Lee's got some weird press trimmer thing i've never used it a buddy of mine couldn't figure out how to use it when he bought a lee reloading kit yeah if you're gonna get if you're gonna get a trimmer there's and you're not gonna go with an electronic or automatic trimmer it's i would go with i think it's the lyman setup where yeah. you, you put it in and then you you crank it and it and it trims it there's other setup but i would i'd probably I've, go with the lyman yeah i have an rcbs trimmer that's just like that right now it's basically like a piston looking thing almost clip yep. the shell in here and the cutter moves forward i've got i chucked a drill onto it yep. so i don't have to do it by hand i think yeah, lyman most of them lyman sells a uh sells a uh the the the, the rod the ramrod specifically that you can adapt a drill but you could probably take the handle off and figure something out yeah, RCBS sells one that's for the drill. Um, all I did was I took the handle off and put a half inch drill chuck on it and just did that. Don't if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, don't use a um, cordless drill. Actually, go buy 
a power drill because your battery is going to go dead before you get through 20 rounds. <laughs> yeah. I, had, I, I was, I tried it at first with a, like a Ryobi cordless drill. And then I ended up just going to Harbor Freight and spending 40 bucks on a drill you plug in that I just yeah. chucked onto it. And, yeah. Do you use a variable speed or one of the high torque ones or is it like not, just, just wrapping out or is it? No, just use it to regular drill. Nothing. Just regular drill. Yeah. Nothing special. Yeah. But uh, but it doesn't take a lot of pressure to cut brass. No, no, and you're not cutting that much. No, no, you're just trimming it off, really. You're just kissing uh, it to uh, to hit yeah, it. But. Yeah, right, right now I'm actually looking into getting a new trimmer that's going to be considerably more expensive and better. Yeah, no, there's a few of them, the uh, Gerard or Gerard or whatever you call it. Yeah, that I'm, that's what I'm looking at. Um, and. The, the Henderson mm-hmm. Triway Trimmer. I know yeah. a lot of people that like that one. See, I, I'm torn between. I'm still torn between the two, but I like the Gerard one because it doesn't make a mess when you're and you can just use it inside in your reloading room if you're in your house. The Henderson's going to leave brass shavings, but I think it also looks like it's easier to use, so it's kind of a yeah. Going with my theme of uh, try like, cheap and and budget. Yeah, see if it works. But again, there's that's not a little prep ba- brass prep station. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's uh, the Frankfurt Arsenal one, and they have uh, it's it's similar to a lot of the others where it has a little uh, case holder, and you adjust it in and out, and it has the power trimmer. Okay. So, so that's what the uh, that's what this this one right here is. Okay, how, how do you like that one? I haven't used that. I uh, honestly, I got it and I've uh, prepped a little bit of brass, but I haven't used it to trim yet. Okay. I uh, that I have some brass that I need to start trimming. Yeah, uh, so do I. For my six XC, so I've got to I've got to trim. Uh, but I'll let you know. I I also saw that uh, Frankfurt Arsenal they have the same cutter, but you can attach it to a drill. So if you just wanted to. To buy, yeah, they they do have a few of those. Um, there was one I was looking at today. It's like crow something trimmer that's similar to little the crow. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, where uh, where it's a hand one. I've heard good things about those too. Yeah, I, I have too. That's the third one of the of the of the really nice ones. You know, Henderson, uh, Girard, and and the little crow or whatever, but it's a it's a cha- it's a uh, caliber yeah. specific one, right? Yep, yep. It's caliber. It's and it's not like family of caliber specific. It's caliber caliber. Specific. It's like three hundred eight. It this does three hundred eight and nothing else. Yeah. Oh, um, and I was looking at them this morning, and they do have them for pretty much every caliber. It's, it's like eighty bucks, so it's about the same price as you would pay for an RCBS desk mounted trimmer or something. You just have to get a drill to go with it. Yeah, but you'd have to but, buy. Yeah, and you have to buy it per caliber, which was a little pricey for the conversions. I want to say it's like thirty or forty bucks per caliber yeah. on top of the seventy or eighty bucks for the trimmer. Yeah, because you get the and, trimmer and then you get the the, the caliber, caliber specific. Insert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, there's there's nice things about uh, the Henderson and Gerard and some of those is you yeah, can the Henderson you can set for. Pretty much any caliber without too much, too much changing. Effort. You have to change the cutting head for a different diameter. But yeah. if you get like a six millimeter cutting head, you can do any six millimeter pretty much. Yeah. And they do because uh, that does the uh, that actually trims the brass and chamfers it right because the yes. Gerard does that as well. It does, yeah. And that's why I was looking at those ones. Yeah. But, but again, that's not something that someone who's getting started in reloading is necessarily. To gonna want because you're looking at between five and eight hundred bucks for so those. if you don't have that what you get is a uh a uh a hand trimmer or not a hand trimmer but a hand champ for a hand tool to do that same thing right um you can buy yeah. that they're like buy a handle from rcbs and then all the heads i bought a lyman one that was an all-in-one thing yeah i have that one i think it's like orange big handle orange you can gold, switch yeah. between yep. yeah yeah it was only like twenty or thirty bucks. It wasn't that bad. That, and and it has good cutters in it. Yeah, it works. It worked uh, really well. That's what I did. I've done thousands with that one. Yeah, so have I. 
But yeah, with um, but yeah, so you definitely need something to trim rifle brass with, or you're only going to get one or two firings. If you're just shooting uh, like two, two, three for an AR, and you're not going to reuse the brass a whole bunch of times, doesn't really matter. Yeah, and honestly, if you're reloading precision, that doesn't have to be on the first list. You can. No, absolutely. Up. You can usually. If you bought two hundred tr- pieces of brass, you're not going to be reloading for. You know, or or tr- you won't have to trim for depending on on caliber and 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 things, but you could shoot it two or three times without having to uh, trim. Yeah, uh, I think I've gotten four or five out of alpha brass before I needed to trim. Yeah. Um. So trimming. Then the next thing would. Uh, and again, this would be down the line, not necessarily a first have to have purchase. Would be in some way to anneal your brass. Yeah. If you want to get more than a few tr- um, shots out of it. Yeah, the uh, the firings, uh, the in- regular annealing also helps with neck tension, which is critical for yep. for uh, precision reloading to, to reduce your uh, extreme spread, the uh, extreme spread of velocity and the standard deviation of the velocity. So uh, definitely the annealing, there's uh, three different basic types of annealing. Uh, one that everybody uh, is probably most familiar with is a propane torch and a socket and templac or yep. you know one of the one of the kits. Uh, probably the uh, or the annealies is probably the most yeah. common one. Yeah, and then the uh, and then there's a salt bath, and that's what I have again. It's it's cheaper. You use a little Lee lead pot, and you actually put crystals of salt in there, and you turn it up, and it's like five or six hundred degrees celsius whatever that is in fahrenheit and it literally melts the salt and it's molten salt and there's a kit out of a guy out of canada makes a great kit for it and you just dip your shell into it and you know that your brass hit the perfect temperature and and you go you just need to rinse rinse the uh, brass afterwards uh but you're good to go there's you can either use too little flame or too much flame and so that's a little bit more sensitive to get tuned up, and uh, yeah. you can ruin brass real easy. But uh, for less than uh, for about a hundred bucks, one hundred twenty bucks, you can get the salt bath kit. But those are kind of the the more you know do it yourself sort of deal. The uh, the go to is more expensive, and that is uh, the uh, amp annealer uses induction. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, how much are those, Randy? Uh I think they're fifteen hundred ish, fifteen sixteen hundred. Yeah. So, oh. um, but that's uh, you can get a kit to auto load it and do a lot of stuff. So, uh, going through there. But what else do you have uh, after uh, after annealing? Uh, some, you'll need something to clean, and we should have gone over this first. Something to clean your brass. Yeah. Um, uh, before. I, I clean my brass before I load it, and a lot of times I'll clean it after I'm done loading it, too, just to get everything off. Uh, you've got your vibratory tumblers. You've got... Some people use the wet stainless steel tumbling. Yeah. They're not they're not very expensive. I mean, you're looking... You can get small ones for, like, 30, 40 bucks. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, I, there's drawbacks to... to to both of them uh reasons not to use either one you know but you can you can use either one and, and make precision ammo i use the vibratory with so do I. Uh, just uh, uh corn cob and rice is media is what i have with a little bit of lemma shine yeah you don't need to get them shiny you know they don't need to look like they came out with the stainless steel pins no uh, but and, and really for me the only don't over complicated i guess is is yeah is that one it can leave it in there long enough and it's done yeah uh yeah did you know if you leave brass in while you go to tumbling while you go to shot show it comes out really shiny when you get back <laughs> holy smokes uh, so it looks yeah. looks, brand, looks brand new yeah i can only imagine that. Uh, did, you, did you check and see whether it was uh whether you took any brass off of it whether it was actually yeah. thinner or? <laughs> yeah, that was fine no, you just polished it. Wow. Um, yeah, but that's it. Um, stainless steel gets it. It does get it cleaner if you care. Personally, I don't care if my brass is that shiny. I 
what I don't like about stainless steel tumbling or um, cleaning is you can't just pull it out and go load it because it's wet and you have to let it dry. Yeah. And you have to make stuff. sure you let it, and you have to make sure you let it dry completely, or it'll ruin your ammo. Yeah, you, it just won't even go off. Yeah, uh, it also dings up the necks. It can. Um, depends upon, on depending the meat. Upon what depends you do on the meat. Yeah. I, like I said, it can, but but again, it dings up necks, and people go shoot precise ammo, uh, shoot yeah. precision with it. So the, the, other, the other things I've seen uh, happen with it are. Pins getting stuck in the flash holes and breaking decapping pins. I've seen pins get stuck across the neck on certain calibers. Mm -hmm. And then you just can't put a bullet in it because you've got a stainless steel pin across your neck. Yeah. If anything, I would, if I ever went to to that, it would be, I would get the stainless chips. Yeah. I, I just can't see myself doing it. You don't. The, you do not gain any advantage in shooting doing it. All you gain is shinier brass. Yeah, and uh, what I don't like is it adds another step. You know, I gotta, yeah. I gotta deal with it. Like you said, I can just run my tumbler and come back and turn it off and leave it in there, and come back and dump it out, get the media out, and and load it. Like I can, it just, it's a set it and forget it sort of thing. And if you do really want really shiny brass, then just run it longer. Yeah, but. It also, I don't see any. If you want to spend the time to do that, go for it. It's not gonna hurt anything, and your I brass only, will be shinier. Yeah, I get no personal satisfaction out of making beautiful ammo, shiny brass, or anything else. Reloading is like cleaning up the dog crap, right? It's I just have to do it because I have a dog, right? I have to reload because I have a gun, um, and I want accurate ammo i want the best ammo that i can and i'm not willing to pay somebody else to do it so it's just something that i have to do yeah uh, so i try to make it as simple and straightforward as possible uh for me so you know looking at budget and looking at all those things that's that's where i come in on it but you don't need to spend a fortune to get started no you just don't uh and, and even and with the simplest stuff don't let people tell you you can't load accurate ammo, or no. you, and, it's, and you can't load good ammo. Right, because I mean you can you can you you can buy the absolute cheapest stuff you can possibly find, and you'll be able to load as long as you do your part and pay attention to what you're doing, and have a good scale. You can load more accurate ammo than you can buy at the store. Yeah, no, like you can buy the cheapest Lee stuff that you can that they make and it'll be more accurate than you can get at the store if you do all the stuff yourself and make sure you get everything properly measured out and stuff yeah but, one other thing uh, i think is super helpful that isn't necessary but i i do think it helps when you're doing the load development and everything else is the uh the hornady comparators comparators or whatever they're called yeah yeah uh yeah, so that you can so you measure make, your brass right, and so that you can uh, measure base to ogive when seeding the bullet. Yep. Yeah, that definitely helps. And some bullets are worse than others. Others, but you'll uh, when you're loading your bullet and what what you're talking about base to ogive, uh, so everyone else knows what it is. The seeding stem on your die is going to hit the ogive of the bullet, which is kind of where it the biggest part of the bullet before it starts tapering back down to a point and that's where it's going to seat from and some bullet not all bullets the total length of the bullet is the same be a few thousandths off if you're measuring from the base of the bullet to the t or from the base of the case to the tip of the bullet yeah because the ogive is basically the part where it first would hit the, you know, where it's going to hit the rifling, that, yep. that, that fat. So as it comes to the point and it gets to the, uh, to the diameter of the bullet, uh, the actual diameter of the, of the bullet and the bearing surface. So that's the, uh, that's the ogive. And so you want to measure to that because from there to the, 
point of a, for instance, polymer tipped bullets are the are the worst because the polymer tip may or may not be a little bit longer, a little bit shorter. But even with burger bullets and everything else from the ogive to the point, we're talking thousands of an inch. So it doesn't take much to uh, to move that to move that. So that's why you want to measure to the to the ogive. Uh, and while we're talking about that, if you get uh, when you get the dies, if you're shooting like a VLD bullet, like a burger, you probably want to get the VLD seating stems. Yep. Uh, get the VLD seating stems. Um, and basically, the normal stems are like this, right? But then the bullet is too long, and so you'll hit the tip of it before it, it before the bottom hits the ogive. So the VLD stems are more like this to accommodate the, the tip to point up in further. Um, so that can cause some erratic, uh, erratic things. But again, that doesn't add any significant cost to uh, to a guy getting no, started. I, Just make sure you get them. Yeah, and most and most die companies, if you call them, they'll just send it to you. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I've ever had to pay for one of you. Um, just and before you... I just before I started realizing that I could call people and get them for free, you know. Yeah. But I mean, they're not very expensive either way. No, and that's just going to depend on the bullet you use. Yeah, and if, and once you buy it, it's kind of bought, so you can yeah. swap it between uh, between calibers. But yeah, I don't think there's that's uh, we didn't write anything down, but those are pretty much the steps and the information. It, it's it's simple. Yeah, uh, and, then, and we'll do some videos on like spe the differences between specific brands and different different things later on uh, make sure and tell us what you'd like to see specific videos on too and we'll make yeah, sure we get, my, do that my laptop almost died there so I must know. mean we're time to be done but uh yeah so it's uh don't be afraid of getting into reloading uh i'd say the most important part of it is buying a reloading book a good reloading book yeah and reading it three or four times uh you know, or one time really solid, just so you understand the process. Uh, yeah. I happen to just buy the Lee manual. Lee takes all of their loading data and steals it from a lot of the other companies. So it has a, it had a good variation. They advertise their Lee products through the whole thing. Yeah. But I, I read that and after reading it and understanding it and, and then watching specific videos and stuff, I felt really, I felt comfortable doing it. Um, yeah. I, I think my favorite reloading manual is probably the Lyman because they don't make a bullet or powder. So they kind of use everyone's bullets and stuff to give you different load data for different bullets. Yeah, I, I think that's true. One of the generic ones uh, is going to be good if you're going to use a very uh, variety of bullets. Yeah. If, if you're like if you're me uh, and you want a book, if I were buying a book right now, uh, to have a book, yeah, I would buy the Burger book simply because I just choose to shoot almost exclusively yeah. Burger bullets. Yeah, and, that, and that, that's definitely the other thing. If you're know you're using one brand of bullet, buy their book. Yeah. Gonna you're going to use Sierra, buy Sierra. Yep, absolutely. You can use and a lot of Hornady, buy Hornady. Buy the Hornady. Yeah. Or or buy all of them. Yeah. Or buy all of them too, because I'm you. Cheap, so I go yeah. online and find it online. Hodgkins has it. You know the, the powder companies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, lot, that, so. but that's something you will notice. Um, a lot of books will have load data for the same load, same weight bullet, and it'll be fairly different. Mm -hmm. So you kind of want to compare and see what you've got. Yeah. No, I always I always do that, and uh, I go with the book. I use at least one book or solid manual or some information from a manufacturer powder manufacturer hodgson's website shooters world's website whatever it is and uh and then i like to uh i will look at the internet and see what other people are loading and write that down just to give me ideas uh but i use one or two formal uh sources if i can get them uh, always one but but yeah, more and never take someone's load data off of the internet without checking it against a book. No, never, never. Uh, guns are different. Uh, brass is different. I could not shoot my the same load 
with Norma Brass to Alpha Brass because the inside uh, case capacity was different. And so go from there. Um, yeah, as you go, uh, you know, get uh, really, if you want to do it, get started. Get started with the brass that you have. Yep. Uh, do it. If you really want to make sure and load good ammo, then probably the number one thing that I would say is if you have a budget and this amount of money and you can buy basic press, basic dies, basic stuff, and buy alpha brass, then buy basic gear and alpha brass. Because yes, the brass absolutely. the brass quality makes a bigger difference than the dies. Yes. Absolutely. hundred percent yep. brass quality is more important than the press you're using. But, you can yep. use the basic press, basic dies, and so get the best quality brass you can. And uh you know we use alpha, we're sponsored by alpha. But uh, we used Alpha before we were sponsored by them. Yep. Right? That's why we called them up and said, hey, we use your stuff. We want, we're going to keep using it. Will you sponsor us, you know? And so uh, we do that. And uh, uh, similar with uh, with the powder, you know, we've been, I've been switching over to Shooter's World powder. And I know you've done it as well. And we've tested I've, it. I've again. been using Shooter's World for years. I, I love it. But so, that, that's a whole nother video. Yeah, other video, but uh, but spend the money on if you if you have a budget and you're going to buy brass, then spend more spend your budget on on brass. Yep. That's where it's that's where you're going to make that's where your money will pay for more precision. Yeah, I mean compared to for like six five Creedmoor using like once fired Federal versus Alpha, exact same everything else, you're going to get ten plus better SD. Yeah, just from the brass. Yeah. That's Those 10 feet per second better uh, on the SD, which is a standard. The, the uh, extreme spread's even going to be more. And at 1,000 yards, you better believe your groups are going to be smaller with alpha brass. Yep. Uh, uh, use alpha brass. You'll, you'll just plain have more. Everything being equal, use alpha brass, you'll have more hits. Use yeah. the top quality brass because you have less velocity spread. So... Well, we've probably belabored this one, and then uh, yeah. I think I I got to uh, got to run, but uh, we do want to hear what you want to uh, want to learn about. We're focusing this principally on the new shooters coming up. Uh, I've been there. I've, I'm a year and a half really solid into long range shooting. Two and three years into you know trying to figure this out on my own. Yeah. Uh, you know, been shooting my whole life, but uh, hopefully this these things help. And uh, we do want more topics. Anything else coming from you, Randy? No, I think that's pretty much it. Just uh, kind of goes to show that you are can reload pretty much on any budget from a couple hundred dollars to more than the price of the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you could, you could spend that. No, the, uh, the uh, Prometheus is more than the, uh, than the last car I bought. <laughs> of course, it was a used one that I got for my daughter, but it's still more than the more than the used car we were driving around yep. so uh, all right all right so we'll see everybody in the next video take it easy steven yep later andy